I want to quickly do a bunch of examples from the bank of questions that you often will see. Um, because once you learn the properties, they seem easy, but once you get to these kind of problems, they get a little more difficult. So let's take a look at what you're being given here. So first of all, it says we're being doing the translation, obviously, by a vector. And they want to tell us that the BC will always be the same as B prime C prime. Let's look to see what that actually means. BC is actually a side, isn't it? So it's really asking, will the side of the original be the same as the side distance of its image? And our answer is yes, that is totally true in a translation. So this is not talking about the distances between the paths of the points. This is talking about the original side to the translated side at the other end it will be exactly the same. So that is definitely a true statement. And the reason it is, is because this motion is isometric. This, this has to do with the fact that these are isometric motions. This one is now a rotation that we're dealing with. And uh, the angle doesn't matter, it's just there so we know we did a rotation. And it's asking us to investigate the paths from A to A prime, B to B prime. Now, these are paths. Why do I know they're paths and not side? It's because it's A to A prime. It's B to B prime, which means, again, it's the pre-image to its image. We know that in a rotation, paths are not parallel. So this is a false statement. When you do a rotation, the paths are not parallel to each other. Here is another question about rotation. And again, the angle doesn't matter. It's just saying that the rotations happened. And they're asking us in particular about uh, the distances from A to A prime. So A to A prime, oops, that's hard to read, um, A to A prime and B to B prime. Are these distances the same? And we know when you do a rotation that the closer you are to the center, the smaller distance you go versus the outside. So it is definitely not true. This is a false statement uh, for sure because distances change depending on how close you are to the center. This is a reflection now so let's think about our properties about reflection. This talks about um, parallel paths. Now be careful though these paths are not referring to the paths a to A prime, B to B prime. Those paths are parallel when you, when you reflect those. But the path we're talking about here is AB. Now if AB is at this angle, when you reflect it, it will be at a perpendicular angle, kind of like this. And so though the paths across will be parallel, but the paths of the side are not necessarily parallel. Let me, let me re-image uh, that for you just as a way to, to help you out. So it's not referring to, again, so let me give you A here and B here. When I reflect that, A would go to somewhere around here, B would go to somewhere around here. And it's asking, is the path of AB, this one, parallel to this one? And our answer to that is no, definitely not. Had they asked, is A A prime and B B prime parallel? Then our answer would be yes, that would be true. Those would be parallel lines. One of the reasons I picked this question to go over is this notation here, A equals A prime. A equaling A prime is a way of saying that basically it didn't move. So that's a, a really important idea. So this says you've done a rotation and it didn't move. It's invariant. What that has to mean, if you did a rotation and it didn't move, it means it had to be the center of rotation. That's the only point that doesn't move. 
when you do a rotation. So A equaling A prime or B equaling B prime or O equaling O prime means it did not move, it's invariant. Let's finish with this question and truly it is one of my favorites. This really comes to the heart of do you know your property. So let's see what it says. It says ABC is congruent to A prime B prime C prime. A student tries to determine these single transformations that mapped one onto the other. She concludes that the re a reflection was involved, all right, first thing, and that it had to have happened that there were more than, there was more than one transformation. Interesting. Take a look. How could she have concluded that the reflection was involved? Doesn't look like a reflection but she claims that one was involved. Take a close look. She knows a reflection happened. Why? Because the orientation is different, isn't it? They are reversed. So that's how she knows that there was a reflection involved. Now her second statement is that she claims she, that there was uh, more than one of them. There was a second item that took place. And how would she know that? Well, here's why. Because if it was just a reflection, C to C prime, B to B prime, A to A prime, should be parallel in their paths. And they are not. So we know by the orientation that a reflection's happened. But we also know something else, either a rotation and a reflection, or a translation and a reflection. But that's kind of cool how knowing properties allows us to, um, to ultimately see what we want to see.